Okay, my friends, Roger once again, and working with electron flood theory, I think I might have a way possibly to increase the efficiency of airplane wings. Now, why would I say that? And what is the Magnus effect? Well, the Magnus effect is a spinning disc like this with air flowing across it. And these are the kind of patterns it shows and it, it it pushes the 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 this up okay because of the spin and the reason is the outside edge of this is following this flow of air and it's moving with it so it's this is less this is pushing against the air that's pushing against it this way so as it comes it pushes up and as this goes past, it, it drags it, so it sort of lifts it. That's what the Magnus effect is. However, on the surface of the uh, airplane wing, here's what I'm going to propose. I'd like to see somebody try it. All right, this is just ultra simple. Electron flood theory says there is nothing but electrons that exist, which means that everything is coated with electrons because that's all that exists. They already know that everything has a valence shell of electrons around it and no matter how you do that you're always going to have electrons on the outside of everything. What does that mean? An electron pushes against other electrons. I call it push to shove. I've seen shown it a million times. Now what is the Magnus effect? The Magnus effect is if you spin a cylinder like this and you have air coming at it it will go up and they have no clue why I don't think well I know they don't now here is why I'll explain it in a minute but I think we can make this as an airplane wing going this direction and put the Magnus spinner here and split the air now this is going to be pushing this way against the bottom which is the electrons will be coming this way these electrons will push these electrons and if it's done in the right way it will push this thing up now in the, at the same time the other part of the spinning wheel that's sticking above will hit these electrons and pull them back with it and let them just fall over the top ride them out and maybe throw another spinner in here another spinner in the front you can make them all different sizes you know, it depends, and you might have to stretch them out so that they, they don't interfere with the next spinner's effect. But the more spinners you could put in here, the faster you're going to pull that air across, and the more push you spin in this direction, the more lift you're going to get because you're pushing, uh, they're pushing this way, you're pushing this way, push to shove. And however you foil it, you might have to foil them this way a little bit so you push them up and make little notches or something. And then when this propeller, this, uh, this, this thing here, is your, is your lifter, your Magnus effect spinner. Now, if you put little, just little notches, tiny, tiny, tiny little notches in there, so that when the air hit it, it would just keep it spinning like this way. Of course, it's going to hit down here, but if you had a bigger distance up here it's going to push much harder up here than pushing down here so you're going to you're again almost going to drive for free it, 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 it's going to lift a lot more i would say than it is what they're doing now they're just smashing into the they're just smashing into all the particles because they're all they are is nothing but push to shove these have particles these are and they're the same particles Bam, bam, you get out of my way, you get out of my way. Well, this says, get that, go, you go, and poof, you push me down. No, you go up, and that's what happens. You're going to go up, and you're going to get out of the way, you're going to go up faster. I say we can add to, and here's what, I don't know if I showed you, but these are electrons, and they're going to be everywhere. That's the bomber. That, that sucker there will explode. That does nothing, so forget about that. That's dark energy, and dark matter. It, it's everywhere. And they're attached to the exploder. And here they are in what is considered a photon. And I show this over and over and over. And when you put them in molecules and atoms, all of the little dark matter sort of goes to the center because the white matter doesn't want to be next to each other. It will always, 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 always encrust the nucleus. Well, what is in the nucleus? The nucleus has 
other particles, they used to call them protons and neutrons. I call them electrons. But there's still going to be most, well, it's always going to be the white particles are going to be pushed to the furthest out extent to get away from each other. That is what they want to do. And always, 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 they know that. There's a valence shell electrons. They sort of know it, but they don't really know it. So no matter what happens, no matter what two surfaces come together, I don't care what they are, if they're these things, you've got electron to electron, electron to electron, electron to electron, electron to electron. There is nothing that exists that has a surface that is not coated with electrons. And that's what I'm working on right now is looking into some space experiments where they're doing plasma. And they don't understand that the bucket that holds the plasma is completely coated with electrons. And then when they shine lights into it, they're forcing more electrons through it. So there's a lot of things that they... I don't know if they're taking into consideration or not, but I want to look at it and go deeper. I've been just barely scratching into that. But this, I believe we can make this, this wing go much faster forward and almost pull itself forward. Who knows? Okay, this is Veritasium, one of my favorite channels. They got 8 million subscribers. Now, I'm just going to do a couple quick clips. Fair user. Watch what happens now. They're going to drop a basketball off of this, and I think this is like 450 feet high, something like that. When Originally, when they dropped it down, zip, it just sort of fell down. Now, he's going to backspin it. Not go this way. He's going to go backspin and just sort of backspin it and and basically drop it but have it spinning this way watch what happens this time with a bit of backspin whoa look at that go <laughs> all right you see what it did it went just took right off now i think i understand what happened and i'm going to explain it and i think we can make airplanes fly much with much less resistance Boom, look at that. No. Stop, I'm going to stop right there. You see that where it is? It went way down like this. Now, is it the water that forced it to come up? Or is it, because I'd love to see them do this um, from a building that was about the same height that didn't have any water. Because water is extremely polar. And this event, to me, is push to shove. And I will explain it to you right now. All right, now back to this again. Don't forget, I my question is, in the air, there is all kinds of water molecules. It's just moisture in the air. It's everywhere. Now, so we know we're going to have a lot of push to shove against that moisture in the air in the form of gases and molecules, yes. But as you see this go down, it doesn't do much until it gets close to the water, and then pew, it takes right off. Water is a compressed form of polar molecules it's extremely polar molecule let me put that and it's condensed it's like almost taking the same water that's up here only f it is exactly <laughs> and forcing it to be in a compressed form here so it's much more reactive and i believe that what m might be happening at first i didn't consider it but now i think this is actually pushing against this so let's see if that if you take the same Let's go back just a second here. All right, here he goes. He's going to tip it off. He's just going to go this way, Spalding. I had one myself when I was a kid. Here it goes. This time with a bit of backspin. Look. Now watch. You see, it doesn't really, it's, it's spinning, but it's not doing a whole lot. When it gets over to here, let's see what happens. Whoa, look at that go. <laughs> Boom. It's just almost riding on top of the water. Now, the other thing is, it's it banged so hard, if you go back and look at this over and over, you can see this is electrons. That's not water. That's not a splash of water. Watch, let's come back here and look at it again. Whoa, look at that go! Boom, there it goes. Now, I'm going to slow this down so you can see it real slow. Turn the sound off because it gets really irritating. Here it goes. Boom. Now, it hit that 
and, and it, it bounced, yes, but watch what it does do. Watch what happens in the war. Alright. This is taken off now. All of a sudden you're going to see it'll be a wall, like a push to shove of, you know, you would think it was like a, a going across, making a ripple of just moving across and pushing the air in front of it. But if you look carefully, you're going to see it's more than that. It's electrons. Watch. Here. See it right here? At this point here, it's starting to really react with the water surface, not making ripples, pushing electrons. And when it finally settles, it'll just stop. And it'll you'll see all the electrons shoot out like that. They're not water particles. They're electrons. A cloud, basically, of electrons. Watch it. Boom. See it? This is not like a inter you can see it's almost like gas is coming off, which it really literally is. Now, watch what happens here. Boom, you see it? Watch this now. This is that same effect will just splay all out in front because that is it's a it's a plasma of electrons and I believe they collected on here because it was spinning backwards and I I know that we can separate the positive from the negative and that got so reactive against this that it somehow created a, comp a plasma situation where it was surrounded or it became plasma inside the ball something like that very strange event watch okay they pull back right away but it, Okay, they come back to it. See it? You see this here? Watch. Boom, 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 boom. There's some kind of a, a magnetic reaction coming out from that ball. See it? Watch. I'm, it's still going. That is, there is some splashing, absolutely. But mostly, it's, they're magnetic particles like. You know, you'd say that's big globs of water falling. It's not. It's magnetic influences. Watch. They pull back. But even when they pull back, you can still see it. That's not a splash of water. It's not splashes. That's energy. And it stays there for quite a while. You see it? It's still just like soaking its electrons in. I think that's what happened. When it hit that water, that water being so polarized, which water is extremely polar, it must have interacted with the spinning ball to create this in extreme amount of magnetic interaction, which is the same thing that I'm talking about to use for the the um, airplane wing. And you could put different types of materials. You might want to use copper, you might want to use a, a, um, aluminum, or some kind of alloys, or who knows what you'd use. But there's a lot to test there. And you can make a little prototype and just see what happens. Would it, would it lift? Would it, would it, in other words, you make a little jig that has the thing on it, and you put it on a little weigher scale, and and then you just make the same amount of air come at it, the same exact amount every time, in the same amount of moisture, the same amount, of, you know, an, an enclosed little thing, and you just blow the air across it. And this time you use copper, the next time you use aluminum, next time you bend it this way, bend it that way, I'd have a blast. <laughs>